Uh, let's start like this, man. Remember when I told you when I first came to prison, man, and it sent me to a, to a dome, and while, while I walk up in there, dudes was on top tier and whistling and stuff like that, and when they took me, when I was going to my room, and I had a bunch of, it was a big white boy with the tattoos that were, when I was going to my room, and a couple guys came down still and talked to me and told him, hey, now it was him, don't mess with him. They were talking about me that day, and Eminem was one of the dudes. Eminem was a pretty cool dude, man. Me and fuck around when we played basketball. You know what I'm saying? He was all right. But the only problem Eminem had, he had a weakness. He had a weakness for white boys. You know what I'm saying? He had two white boys. And so he was so fucked up by them white boys, man, it was a shame, man. It came to the point where Eminem, one night I'm walking around, and I'm looking around, looking for him. And they say, I asked the white boy, I was standing by the steel, by, by the door. I said, wait a minute, they say he ended up. I said, what are you doing? He said, with his people. I said, okay. So what he was doing was, he had one outside, while he bowed that one off, and then after that, once he finished with that one inside, the other one going up. So I said, that's how Eminem was going. He was a booty bandit, a real old booty bandit from back in the day, but he, wasn't, he didn't look that old, he was like in his 50s. He was in his 50s, and I was like in my 20s, you know what I'm saying? I was young. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he was doing, he was a bad, bad booty bandit. But at the same time, being a booty bandit was not even, he was just so wild that he was a robber too. So what he was doing, when a robbing motherfucker, that way he could say, he could think, if you know you had it, he's gonna come, gonna come get it. So I'm in the dorm chilling. I'm in the dorm chilling, and the white boy came in there to buy some cigarettes from Papa Zoo. Papa Zoo was my partner, a rich man, he was my partner. He had all the cigarettes, all the phones, you know what I'm saying? Whatever he wanted, dope, he had it all. You know what I'm saying? So, so M come in there. And how that Papa Zoe, he all right with us, so it was no question, you know what I'm saying? He would never disrespect Papa Zoe or me, because you know, I was fucking with him, mean straight. But the white boy, he seen a white boy came in at the box of cigarette. A pack of cigarette was $50 for one pack of cigarette. You see what I'm saying? The white boy came in about three pack of cigarette for $150. And then noticed that the white boy came in about the cigarette, he got out of the room and went outside and pulled stuff and told his buddy. When the white boy finished bought them cigarettes, he was walking out the dorm to go to his dorm. Eminem walk up behind him and put him in the chokehold. When he put him in the chokehold, he told him, don't move. And then the other dude went in his pocket and, and took a pack, three pack of cigarettes and he walked away. That just lets you know what kind of push I'm dealing with. This guy was a fucking serious madman. Because he had them punks. He had to take care of them punks. Somebody got to take care of them punks. Got to get them punks food, the canteen, and, and that, that's, what he, that's what he was doing. So now, after Eminem robbed this man, you know what I'm saying? Papa Zoe was selling phone. And Papa Zoe was selling phone. He sold phone to a dude. And the dude was talking a lot of shit about Papa Zoe. Oh, he gonna rob Papa Zoe. He gonna do this. He gonna do that. Mm. So I started thinking. I said, man, this motherfucker disrespecting Papa Zoe ain't talking shit about me too. Okay, so now Eminem used to use my phone all the time. You know what I'm saying? To call people out. Call my partners on the phone. But he, you know, he, he, he said he needed a phone. I said, Eminem, check this out. You still need a phone? He said, yo, he said, check this out, I might have one for you. He like, what's up? No, you don't rob it now, he like, what's up? I said, check this out, man, dude bought his phone from Papa Zoe, and he already talking shit, disrespecting Papa Zoe, talking shit about me. He said, what, what you want me to do? I said, check this out, do you want a phone? He said, yeah, I said, man, he's staying this dome out here, go get that phone, go get it, it's where he put it at. So that's what he got to tell him, and then they put his knife on him, one morning, one morning about four, five o'clock in the morning, and while everybody going to chat, he was coming inside the dome. We went up in the dorm, we got, got up in the dude's room where the, where, the, where, the, where the phone was at, took the phone. While he was in there, somebody seen him and locked him in there. So now Eminem going crazy. So, but before the dudes came from child, somebody popped the door for him before he got out. Well, it came around the compound that Eminem was the one that went in there and took the phone. So this what happened. You won't believe this, man. When he, when he got that phone, motherfucker, motherfucker, Know that he had the phone, came in the yard and told him, hey, check this out, man. Yo, check this out. That phone you took, M, let me get that phone. M told him, listen, check this out, let me tell you something. I ain't got nothing to do, man. Now, if you want, do you want to die? The dude thought about it when he seen that knife on him, he thought about it. He said, nah, man. I only got two years. So he said, if you got two years, you need to go home, man, because I will kill your ass by this phone. So then guess what? The phone was gone. And then they had a phone now. He was chilling. He was all right. You see what I'm saying? So now, but basically what I'm saying is this, man. This guy was a hardcore, whatever you 
could, you could, you could, you could think of. Ten years later, you won't believe this, man. I'm in the backyard chilling, chilling in the backyard, and I see a tall dude running around the yard. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking at him. He noticed I'm looking at him. He stopped. He said, "Hey, so what's up?" As he got close to me, I'm like, "What's up?" He like, "Man, what I know you?" I said, "Man, this cash, man." He said, "Cash." He said, "Yeah." I said, "Boy, what's up?" He said, "This, this is him." I said, oh shit, we hugged up. I'm like, God damn, my nigga, it's my nigga, boy. I said, boy, what's up? What you been up to? I said, boy, he said, man, I've been doing time, man. It's been like, maybe been like 15 years. I've been down, man. I've been down 15. He said, yeah, man. I've been down longer than you, but I ain't nothing. I said, damn. He said, I said, 15. He said, I ain't nothing. I said, damn, I ain't want to cry about the little 15 out there. Because he done, he done did more than me. You feel me? He been in prison. So now, we talking, we talking, we talking, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? Everything's straight. So one day I'm in the dorm chilling, chilling in the dorm, chilling, you know, still watching TV, and I and he walk up in the dorm. Hey, I know he a wild, but he got like, oh shit, what are you doing here? So he walk upstairs, he walk downstairs, you see what I'm saying? He walk downstairs, and he stepped to me, he said, Ken, I said, what's up, baby? What's going on, bro? He like, man, I'm finna wild somebody in here, man. I ain't got no food, I ain't got no canteen, I ain't got none. I just got this knife, I'm finna wild somebody in I said, check I stop. I said, Chester, what's the problem, man? What do you need, man? I said, man, I ain't got no food. I said, but tell me what you need. I need some cigarettes. Okay? I said, Chester, I got something. I went in my pocket and got three Cadillac and gave it to him. Cadillac and cigarette, four cigarettes. I said, here, yeah. I gave him three. I went up, woke up in the room. In the room. I said, Chester, you see all this canteen wine I got? Get you a bag and full that shit with canteen soups, cookies, honey bun, full that shit up with food, bro. When he came out the door, when he came out the room, he had a bag in his back. He had a bag in his back full of food. And he went back to his dorm. Everybody like, what happened? What's going on? I said, that's my dog. I gave it to him. But they just don't know that I saved them because he was going to rob them in there. You see what I'm saying? That's just how it was. But now, the problem with even my 20 men got a problem. Not too long from there, they changed the compound into a transgender compound. So you got motherfuckers around with big old titties walking around the compound. Ass bigger than the motherfucker like they're women. Talking about like they were women. I get this something to that camp there, they to give them shots. I get the law on chain where the homosexuals could get they could get treatment for the titties and all type of shit. So they had all of them in the ACI. It changed the compound into a transgender compound. Okay, so you got all the points on, on steady floor to go down there. So guess what? They still got aim out there. So now this was going on. Now this 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 is gonna get crazy right here. So now M done got hooked up. We won the punks. A punk, a light skinned punk with long hair. I don't, I don't know how they hell he got his hair long. You know what I'm saying? He got a tight ass pants, so to say, the ass big as a motherfucker. I get to take it, get them shots and stuff. And I'm fed in love. You going to child with him, you don't give a fuck no more. You walk on the child holding hands. He taking his trade from the child. He treating the punk better than a man treat a woman. That's how crazy that shit is, though. You know what I'm saying? And he, he knocking them off like he's knocking a woman off. You know what I'm saying? And, and he watching anybody that would look at the punk, he went to take off, where to the beach, where to stab you. That's how his weakness was. You know what I'm saying? As time went by, another another dude started talking to the punk. So when dude started talking to the punk, and I'm in confinement right now. As I was in that in confinement, I could have talked to him and not to do what he was going to do. Because I'm in confinement on the investigation. You know what I'm saying? So now, get what Eminem did. The dude took his punk from him. The dude took the punk. So the dude walked in the backyard, he took off his shirt, you know, he cut up, been working out, big dude working out. And then you see Eminem, he looked at the Eminem like, yeah, I got your people, bro. I got your people. So, when Eminem seen that shit, man, he like, oh, yeah. You know what Eminem did? Eminem, when he got him a motherfucker razor this long. To my own way, he got that razor like a box cutter. Got a motherfucking box cutter. And then he walk up there to them. Dude that had, had no shit on, showing all that. He got his punk, whatever, man. He walk up there with the razor. He hit the razor. He hit him in the razor by the face. Wow! And he hit the dude. Do fair, blood everywhere, ski on his forehead. Shh, 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 shh. And he turned around and hit the pump. Wow! You know what I'm saying? And it was some other dudes that was there. They took off running because they seen all this blood, all this shit going down. They, they took off running. 
You see what I'm saying? I'm in confinement. I would just say, you know, you the five, you the five, in the backyard, in the backyard is a mess. It, 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 somebody gonna stab. Da, 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 da. So now all the police is out of confinement. Run out of like, what's going on? This is somebody, some man, some dude don't wear ham out in the yard, man, stabbing people and shit. You see what I'm saying? So now, all because they took his pump. He done lost it. You see what I'm saying? So now, while I'm in confinement, I'm sitting and I'm, I seen him coming in there. They got him on. Shacked up, wrapped up, the police don't beat him and everything. They bring him in there. They put him in the room. I said, bro, what happened? What's going on? He said, man, I'm telling you, man, I, I went ham. I said, we ham for what? He said, man, somebody took my boy. I said, somebody took your boy? I said, what, what you saying? He said, I stabbed them all. But listen, he almost killed them people. He almost killed both of them because they had the life. Life out, life flight them out of there, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker got cut right up by the temple right with a razor. Blood started skiing. Skiing, what well, just skiing. Then the other one got cut right here by the neck. The pony got cut by the neck, like he trying to cut his whole neck off. You see what I'm saying? And when he took him to confine me, he talking about he, he ain't no witness. I said, man, you out of there, man. You crazy. Well, he just let you know, man, no the cop, the type of shit that I seen, man. And the people, the people, they around you, you don't know it's who. Till, 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 till their weakness come out, man. If you got a weakness for, 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 for booty, for drugs, eating too much, that's bad. Because when you ain't got no food, you do anything for it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no woman here, you ain't enough fucking the pumps, you ain't out of control yourself, you got a big problem in prison, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, listen, man. M should be out right now, man, you know what I mean? And, you know what I'm saying? And when I was in confinement with him, man, I talked to him. I said, bro, you should never do what you did. He said, man, you know what I'm saying? If you were there, man, if you were out of confinement, that probably would have never happened because you always give me some good advice, man. You should walk away from that, man. He said, but I had some fucked up people around me give me some messed up advice. That's why I ended up doing what I did. And I cut them motherfuckers. I almost killed them. You know what I'm saying? But just to say, man, this, this, this life, man, this, this was the worst Part of my life, man, being locked up, man. The shit I seen, man. I seen man, man, love a punk more than they love a woman. They love booty more than more than they love life, man. Man say, man, once you get inside some booty, you'll never go back. And that's some fucked up shit. But I know that's not true. You know what I'm saying? I don't need no man to, to, to tell me there's no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, man. Y'all be easy, man. I got some more stories, man. You know, I hope I'm not too, 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 too real, man, because I don't know if y'all ready to hear this type of shit, man. But I'm not going to hide nothing from you. I'm going to get to y'all blood raw, man. That gets, that, gets, that gets me. Every video you're going to hear, I'm going to get you blood raw, man. Y'all be easy, man. Y'all take care of yourself, man, and, and God bless, man.